convergence divergence indicator is abbreviated and just called by most of us today by MACD. And it's used to spend, spot changes in strength, direction, momentum, and the duration of a trend in a stock's price. Now, when it was developed originally, it was developed for the stock market. This was the only thing that people were actually trading. You could trade futures and options, but they were traded only by professionals. There was no such thing as online trading. There was no retail trading market. So most of the people using tr investors using technical analysis and the brokers who are offering stock trading and have their stock brokers advising you were using MACD to help develop or help understand where a stock could be going. But since then, it has been adjusted and now works in almost every financial market, whether it's a short period market or a longer period market, whether it's a fast moving asset or a slow moving asset, as long as it is a liquid asset. And when we're trading CFDs, whether we're trading with Trade Time or another broker, we're trading only the most liquid assets. How reliable indicators are in assets that aren't liquid, you know, some unusual currency. Because what happens is, as you get away from the primary markets, the liquidity providers shrink up, the ability to spy and sell on a dime shrink up, and the spreads on the more exotic assets get wider and wider. So, MACD on the whole works in any type of market we would be trading in CFDs or Forex or cryptocurrency. Now, the MACD is one of the most popular and broadly used indicators for Forex trading. The letters MACD is an abbreviation for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. The MACD indicator, which requires a moving average as input, falls into a group of what's called lagging indicators. Now, Lagging in a connotation outside the financial markets is like negative, but he's lagging the group, he's lagging in his education, he's lagging the rest of the class. Because indicators are broken into two groups, leading and lagging. But in the financial markets, one is not better or worse than the other. Leading indicators lead the trend. They predict that a trend is about, so, a lot of times they predict the trend is overbought or oversold, where a lagging indicator confirms that, that trend has now ended. Okay. So they just have different functions. They're not better or worse. And the basic function of the MACD Forex indicator is to discover new trends and help to identify the end of current trends. Now, there are various ways to gauge signals generated by MACD, and many traders use their own unique settings and methods around this trading method. Now, I have taught this class a zillion times. And no matter how I've reworked it, no matter how I've reworded it, no matter how interesting I try to make it, I first have to teach you and get you to understand where all of the lines come from to make up the MACD indicator. Because the MACD indicator is typically placed at the bottom of the trading chart in a separate window beneath price charts where most indicators are. The MACD tool is a relatively easy to use tool, but it's crucial to understand it fully before attempting to trade using its signals. And the MACD is a four-step derivative. Okay, that means it's moved away from price by four different calculations. And unfortunately, you have to learn, you never have to do the calculations, but you have to understand what the lines and how a move in price has an effect on the MACD lines. Once we go through this, you'll never have to do it again. You'll know it, you'll understand. So MACD, and I'm gonna do it for you live and explain to you live on charts, but MACD starts off based on a 26 day and a 12 day or 26 period and 12 period exponential moving average. So let's go over to a live chart. Okay, so we're looking at gold. So the first thing we have to do is calculate 
And we don't do the calculations, but we need the 12 and the 26 period moving averages. So I've got these set up for us already. And see, we have a 26 period, and we're going to put that in here in red. So let me just turn that on. So that is our 26 period EMA. And we also need a 12 period EMA. So these are the, the blue and the red lines that have just been dropped on our price chart. Now we're using a 30 minute price chart of gold. And we have our 26 period in red. And our 12 period in blue. And the colors are unimportant except for right now for my explanation. Now, for those of you who don't understand moving averages that much, okay, the shorter period, regardless of how you're using a moving average, okay, but the shorter the period, the faster it responds to price move. And when you're using multiple moving averages, whatever the shorter period moving average is, it's called the faster moving average. And the longer period moving average you'd be using is called a slower moving average. Why? Here we're using a 12 period. So say, for instance, we're looking at gold, and gold is currently trading about 12.03. If gold had been trading at 12.03 at half hour before now, a half hour before that, a half hour before, but gold jumped up to 12, say 12.23 at this last half hour, our shorter period moving average, which we would take the 1223 plus nine periods back in 1203, would we'd add it all together and divide it, and it would give us a moving average around 1205, 1206. Now, if we were to use the 26 period and price had just jumped up and all the periods going back were at 1203 and hadn't moved, that current moving average would only be at 1204 because it responds slower because you you got longer length with more divisibles so if you're using a say a 30 and a, and a 90 or a 50 and a 100 period moving average crossover strategy the 100 period would be the slower and the 50 period would be the faster so in this case we're using a 12 and a 26. now if we were to simply use a 12 and a 26 period moving average, we would just be simply trading a moving average crossover strategy, which is a good strategy, but it's a very simplistic strategy. But what Gerald Arpel did is he removed this, moved it farther away with more calculations to, to get better signals. So what we do is we then put our MACD on our chart and we simply go up here to indicators and scroll down on the indicators till we find moving average convergence and divergence. Come on, where's my MACD line here? So we look for MACD, we click on it. And it's been dropped on our chart down below. Now, I'm going to set this up a little bit for us here so that you can follow us along. So I'm going to go over here to the format. And see, here we're using a fast and a slow of a 12 and a 26 period and a smoothing of nine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the histogram right now because you don't. we haven't even talked about it yet. I'm going to turn off the signal line, and I'm going to put on here what we call the MACD line. I'm going to make that bright blue and thick. And this line below, this blue line at the bottom, is based on a zero midline, which is right here on our chart. And all we're doing, this line, this blue line, is simply 
a calculation of the short term and the long term moving average, the 12 and the 26. You're going to take the 12 period moving average and subtract from it the 26 period moving average. The difference between those moving averages is then dropped on this plot, plot on this chart below. And whatever that separation is, is what it is. Period in. When the blue line or when the, the faster moving average is longer or larger than the slower moving average, it's going to be a positive number. But when we have the 12 period moving average and the shorter period is larger, so we're taking the 12 period and subtracting a larger number, it would be a negative number. So when it's above the zero line, we automatically know that the 12 period moving average is above the 26 period moving average because when you subtract a bigger number from a smaller number you get a positive number so it's more than zero when the slower moving average is larger than the shorter moving average you'd be subtracting a small number you'd be subtracting a larger number from a smaller number and that number would always be negative so it would be somewhere below the 100 now, when the two moving averages cross each other, they are what? Always zero because they're the exact same number. So when gold is at 12.03 and this short moving average and a long moving average are both at 12.03, at 12 you subtract them and it's always zero. So whatever this blue line is on as the zero line, you know that the two numbers are crossing. You don't know which way until the next number comes up, but when they cross and it's a negative number, you know that the longer moving average is moved to larger than the smaller moving average. When it crosses over the zero line and goes above, you know the longer moving average, the shorter moving average is larger than the longer moving average. Same as what you see on the above lines. So all it's doing is taking this line minus that line. Whenever they cross over, they're at zero, and you can actually see almost the movement in the chart. So that's the first line. Or actually, now we have three lines. We have the two moving averages, and then we have what's called the MACD line, which is the blue line below, and it's referred to as the MACD line, which is simply the difference of the two moving averages. At this point, we no longer need these moving averages on our chart. So I'm going to turn them off because all that MACD does is ca does a calculation. It doesn't have to plot it on a chart. It's just calculating and forming this blue line. But these are the steps we use to form the MACD line below. But again, if we were just trading the above zero and below zero on the MACD line, it's simply no different than trading a moving average crossover because all this is doing is plotting the moving average cross. So again, Gerald Arpel wanted his indicator that he was developing to be more accurate and give you better trading information than just using a moving average crossover. So he added on to that what's called the trigger line or the signal line. I always call it the trigger line, but it's called either one, the trigger or the signal line. And we get this And we're going to make this dark orange. And this trigger line is a nine period moving average of the difference, not of the difference, of the signal line above the MACD line. So all you do is you take nine periods of the MACD line, whatever number it was that you plotted on the chart, and add them together and divide by nine. And that gives us 
this signal line, this orange line. Okay. Now, we are one step farther removed from price. But now what we have is when the orange line crosses the blue line, okay, we then have buy and sell signals, or what's called transaction signals. So we're not using a moving average crossover because we've defined it or refined it one step farther. And we're using this moving average we're using this trigger line and the MACD line. Now, again, whatever the signal line and the MACD line cross each other, they would be at zero. Whenever the MACD line is larger than the signal line, it would be positive. And whenever the MACD line, the signal line is below, larger than the MACD line, it would be negative. Because now we go one step farther and we add on our chart what's called a histogram. A histogram is simply a bar chart of the difference between the two lines that we have on the chart. So we're going to add the histogram on here. And now we have a visual representation of how the signal line and the MACD line are moving in conjunction. And if you notice, we can now see very easily whether they're moving up in a positive manner or down in a negative manner. And we can see each time they crossed over the zero line. Now, when it crosses the zero line and starts forming the mountain, that's a buy signal. When it crosses the zero line and starts forming the valley, that is a sell signal. Now, these are signals. They're not, they do not take in account any depth. They're not telling you, okay, it's telling you the asset's going to fall, but it doesn't tell you how far it's going to fall. Or it tells you to buy because it can go up, but it doesn't tell you how far it's going to go up. So you have to use other indicators to determine whether it's a tradable signal. Okay. Because MACD gives you entry and exit points, but it doesn't tell you whether you make profit. Because remember, you got to cover the spread. And it could shoot up very quickly and come back down. So it's you can think of them as alerts as opposed to transaction signals. It's, it's saying, OK, you're getting a buy. Use other things to determine your profit at your risk reward, your risk management, and your money management, because all this is doing is telling you that you should be considering buying that asset. But you have to use other pieces of information to make that determination. And that's only one of the simple ways we use MACD. Okay, there are several other ways we can use MACD into making our decisions. And let me show you this on another set of charts. And I'm going to show you with an example that we put together for you. So let's add our MACD. We go to indicators up here, we can click and we can choose, uh, go to oscillators, we can find our MACD in there or a shortcut if you go to most popular, because it's one of the most popular ones, you'll see uh, the more popular indicators in there. So let's click on MACD. Here we go. So uh, my setup here has got the default value. So 12, 26, nine if i click on confirm the macd gets added to my chart so let's just bring this up just so we can see everything a bit more clearly so let's let's walk back first of all let's just look at some of the, the straightforward signals so coming in or last year december 2016 sell signal there so we have the lines crossing over giving us a sell we have a buy signal in there which wasn't that good it was a bit early and a buy signal there which was a lot better then we had our sell signal there, which eventually worked out OK. A buy signal down there. You can see the crossover, 14th of March. Sell signal there, not that good. Sell signal up there. Um, it was OK, I suppose, if you were patient and stuck with it. Uh, then a buy signal down here, the 28th of June. And the most recent signal we've had is on the 3rd of August, uh, which would have this sort of area 
up here, that was our sell signal. So the, the daily MACD didn't do too badly uh, when it comes to pound dollar uh, over the last eight months or so. And here you can see the histogram and all the histogram is showing us. You can see here when, if you look at this period here from March, where the histogram starts to turn green from being red, it means these two lines are starting to move closer together. So it can be an early warning to get ready for a signal. And then when the lines cross, such as here, the histogram moves over that zero line. So it shows us the signal had happened. And the same back here, you know, we only have one day where the histogram had dropped. But again, it suggests that maybe uh, momentum is starting to fade. And then bang, when it slips below, that's our signal that the lines have crossed over. And the last signal we had at the end of uh, last week, that's the end of uh, the second week of August, the market had um, the histogram was turning green, suggesting the lines were starting to move a little bit closer together. So that's, um, that's the MACD histogram uh, on a daily chart for pound against the dollar going back over the last eight months or so. Okay, so we saw a very simple explanation, and this is one of the basis of using the MACD. Now, from here, we go to the more complex use of this, this indicator. We have it all on our charts. It was not difficult to put on our charts. All the calculations were done. And now you know where all of these numbers come from and where all these lines are derived from. So by knowing this, you also can look at price and see when price and either the MACD line are out of whack or it's giving you a forewarning that it's not really a good signal. Okay. But when you don't understand where the lines are coming from and you trade them blindly, you can't recognize when you're getting false signals or something's just out of whack at the moment. Now, we do want to pay attention to the histogram as well as the MACD line down below because MACD gives us other ways to interpret the markets. And I'm going to take you back over to my PowerPoint. And we're going to go over this step by step. Now, I've also given it to you. There's a handout which you can download, which is on your screen. And you can't get it any other way if you don't download it now. You won't be able to get it later tomorrow or next week or when you watch the recorded version. So no matter what device you're watching the class on, click on the download and save it on that device. And then you can transfer it wherever you want. Now, the MACD histogram is an ele elegant visual representation of the difference between the MACD and its nine period moving, a nine day or nine period EMA. So once we have it on the charts and you've seen exactly how to put it on the charts and it wasn't very complicated, you, we need to learn how to understand it. So in downtrending markets, the fast moving average will move down faster than the slow moving average. As the fast moving average diverges from the slow moving average, MACD will illustrate that relationship. In uptrending markets, the 12 period EMA should move faster than the 26. As such, the MACD will move higher to express this growing difference. And the faster and more momentum that the upward swing or the downward swing also tells you how fast that trend or that price is moving. So remember the basics start with the signal line. Okay. We also want to look at the zero line or the signal line when the, when the two lines cross the signal line. Okay. So this is where the signal line comes in play. Remember, on a quick video, we were looking for when the peak started moving to the valley and when the valley started moving to the peak. That's at the zero line. So when MAC, the MACD line crosses above and over the signal line, it's looked at as a signal to buy. When the MACD line crosses below the signal line, it's often looked at as a signal to sell. In an effort to more closely follow the relationship between the MACD and the signal line, traders can follow the histogram, which is simply a bar chart plotted around the zero line 
to indicate the relationship between the MACD and the signal lines. Now, MACD tells us three different stories. We can use it for crossovers, overbought and oversold conditions, and as divergences. Now, the crossovers are what we've been talking about and we showed you on the video. When the MACD line crosses its signal line, it will generate buy or sell signals. Okay. Or when you look at the histogram, when the histogram is at zero and then starts to form downward below that, the starts forming the valley directly below, it's a buy, a sell signal. When it for, hits that zero line and then starts forming the mountain, it's a buy signal. And they're fairly reliable, but keep in mind, as I explained to you, they don't tell you how far that asset's going to move. So you have to use other means to interpret. It. Now, as that asset's moving, and the faster it moves up, the bigger the mountain will get, or the, the lower the valley will get, and the steeper it gets. Well, the depth of those valleys and mountains also some inter help you interpret the trend. So the MACD line is also useful as an overbought or oversold indicator. When the shorter moving average pulls dramatically from the longer moving average, or the MACD rises very high, it should be, it's likely the symbol is overextending and will soon return to more realistic values. Or the exact opposite, when it dramatically falls below the zero line, it's telling you that those could be overextended and, and oversold market. Then lastly, we have divergence. Now divergence is one of the most reliable pieces of information we get from MACD, but it's also the most complex. So indication that an end of the current trend may be near occurs when the MACD diverges from the symbol. So in other words, if the asset is moving in a downtrend and making lower lows while the MACD line itself is forming higher lows, that means we have divergence. The symbol or the asset is moving opposite its indicator. So here we can see the asset is making lower lows and that's, that's the definition of a downtrend. While we see here the MACD line, not the signal line, not the histogram, but the MACD line itself is forming higher lows. So it's actually moving on an upward trajectory while the asset itself is moving in a downward trajectory. So a bearish divergence occurs when the MACD is making new lows while the price fails to reach new lows. Both of these divergences are most significant when they occur at relatively overbought or oversold levels. So in other words, in deep valleys or deep peaks. A bearish divergence forms when a security records a higher high and the MACD line forms a lower high. The higher high in the security is normal for an uptrend because that's how an uptrend is defined. Higher highs, is the explanation higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. That's the definition of an uptrend. But when our indicator, so we have higher highs, but our indicator is making lower highs and it is diverging in direction from our price chart, it's giving us a divergence or a warning that the trend that it's on, the trend that the price is on is about to reverse. So even though upside momentum may be less, upside momentum is still outpacing downside momentum as long as the MACD is positive. Okay. So remember, even though the MACD was moving downward, it's still positive because it's still above the signal line. So the asset is still moving upward. Waning upward momentum can sometimes foreshadow a trend reversal or a sizable decline.
So you have to keep in mind though, and like I said, in the handout you have, I've given all these examples with charts and everything else and explanations, spelling it out step by step. But you have to remember, ultimately, you can also see all of this in the histogram. But the MACD histogram is an indicator of an indicator. In fact, MACD is also an indicator of an indicator. This means that the MACD histogram is four steps removed from the price of the underlying security. In other words, it's a fourth derivative of price. So we start out with the first derivative, which is the 12-day EMA and the 26-period EMA. We go to the second derivative, which is how we calculate the MACD line, which is the, tw the shorter moving, the faster moving average, the 12 period, minus the 26. Then the third is the MACD signal line, which is simply a nine day EMA of the MACD value. And the fourth line is the MACD histogram, which is the MACD less the MACD signal line plotted on that histogram. The base of this indicator is the securities price takes four steps to get from the actual price to the histogram. So as with MACD, the MACD histogram is also designed to indicate convergence, divergence, and crossovers. So we can either use the MACD lines or the histogram. Now, it's become standard to plot the signal line below, which we started out earlier with, and a signal line, also known as a trigger line, is created by taking the nine-day moving average. And this crossover creates simplistic transaction signals. The basic bullish signal or the buy signal occur when the MACD line crosses above the signal line. And the sell signal is the exact opposite. We also want to keep in line, mind the zero line or the center line. The MACD indicator is calculated by taking the difference between the short-term moving average and the longer term. Given this construction, the value of the MACD indicator must be equal to zero each time the two moving averages cross over each other. As you can see in this figure over here, across through the zero line is a very simple method that can help us to identify the direction of the trend and the key points when momentum is building and it'll keep us on the right side of the trend. Now, in the previous examples, the various signals generated by this indicator are easily interpreted and can quickly be incorporated into any short-term trading strategy. At the most basic level, the MACD indicator is a very useful tool that can help traders ensure that short-term direction is working in their favor. Now, also remember, and I explained to you that the biggest drawback is of the indicator is that it generates transaction signals where you get whipped in, out, in and out of position several times because it doesn't take into account how far the asset's going to be to move. It only tells you it's going to go up or down or where the momentum is taking it, but it doesn't tell you how far. So as you see in the chart, the lagging aspect of this indicator can generate several transaction signals during a prolonged move. And this may cause the trader to realize several unimpressive gains or even small losses during a rally. Traders should be aware that the whipsaw effect can be severe in both trending and range bound markets. Because relatively small movements can cause the indicator to change direction quickly. The large number of false signals can result in the trader taking many losses, especially when commission or spreads are factored in this amount. So you should always use MACD with other pieces of information. Volume is very, very helpful. Support and resistance lines can be helpful. Another MACD drawback is its inability to make comparisons between different securities. Okay. Now, the MACD indicator is the most popular tool in technical analysis because it gives traders the ability to quickly and easily identify the short-term trend direction. This clear transaction signals help minimize the subjectivity involved in trading and the crosses over the signal line make it easy for traders to ensure they are trading in the direction of the momentum. Very few indicators in technical analysis have proved to be more reliable than the MACD. And this relatively simple indicator 
can quickly be incorporated into any short-term trading strategy. So if there were ever a quest in the world in investing on par with the search for the Holy Grail, it would be acquiring the ability to spot trend changes. There are many ways investors attempt to do this with varying degrees of success. But a common trend tracking tool is the two-line moving average convergence and divergence. This tool measures an asset's momentum and can aid investors in spotting changes in market sentiment. So momentum in charting is similar to momentum in physics. If you throw a ball in the air, it will ascend at a slower pace and slower pace the higher it projects. After monitoring the change in momentum, a person can determine when that ball will stop climbing and change direction and descent. So just like in physics, momentum changes occur before the price of an asset changes. And there are other ways to use MACD and there's all types of uh, papers and analysis in the marketplace of people that have come up with all their other interpretations. But MACD has lasted in the market for 40 years and is one of the most popular used indicators because it is reliable and dependable. But the strength of the current trend can be measured by channeling MACD, spot trend, trend, trend reversals by looking for divergence in momentum as measured by MACD channel. Determine buy and sell signals using MACD crossovers or bounces. Learning to implement and recognize these signals helps investors increase their profits when trading short and intermediary term trends. Now, you can also use MACD to plot entry as well as exit points, but that becomes a little bit finer determination. But like life, trading is rarely black and white. Some rules the traders agree on blindly, such as never adding to a loser, can be successfully broken to achieve extraordinary profits. However, a logical approach for violating these important money management rules needs to be established for attempting to capture gains. In the case of the MACD histogram, trading the indicator instead of price offers a new way to trade an old idea, divergence. Applying this method to the Forex market, which effortly allows scaling up of positions makes this idea even more intriguing to day traders and to position traders alike. So remember, start out simple and easy. Practice with MACD. It can be your a very inclusive indicator. And using this with chart patterns, with trend lines, and with support and resistance on your chart, you can have a whole unique trading system that's easy to understand, easy to monitor, and easy to take advantage of. So as I said, I gave you that handout. It gives you all these examples in detail. You can't get this handout any other place, any other time. And make sure you click the download button to save it now. And thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for supporting Trade Time and Investing.com. And remember, you can see a recorded, unedited recorded version of this class uh, using the same link you used to come to tonight. Or you can access it after it's edited on the investing.com website. Have a good night now, and thank you for supporting all of us. Good night now.